Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and I have finally got my one, two, three distributor for this car, so I'm gonna fit that today and hopefully get it running properly. Yes! Okay, so my distributor has just turned up and uh, that means that I can hopefully get this car running properly today. There's a few things I have to do first though. Um, last week you saw me uh, reconnect the radiator hose and stuff. I still haven't actually filled it with coolant. So that's the first job today is uh, actually get some fluids back in this car and make sure everything is tip top, ready to go. All right, time to mix up the coolant. I'm using some Penrite Classic Car Coolant um, and it says 10 to 15 percent uh, to demineralize water. So I'll start mixing that up in uh, Mrs. Jeff's uh, watering can, which she doesn't know won't hurt her, and uh, we'll uh, get some cooling in the car. All right, with the radiator topped up, I'll, uh, I'll just leave it and I'll top it up as I go. As I warm the car up, I'll, uh, it'll start pumping the, uh, the fluids around and I'll just keep uh, topping it up, making sure that all works properly. Um, but for now, I need to change the coil over. Now, this coil was designed for the electronic distributor uh, version of the, uh, like the 280ZX distributor I had on there. That I'm no longer using because it's... Uh, <laughs> doesn't work, mine one's dead. Um, and that's why I've got this uh, this new distributor. And the uh, the one, two, three ignition, uh, they recommend the, uh, particularly for sort of slightly uh, more performance applications, the Bosch red coil. So I deliberately went and ordered uh, this correct coil for it. So next thing to do, let's swap this out, swap this in, and um, then we can start looking at fitting that distributor. All right, let's have a quick look at uh, distributors. So I'll go through these uh, here. This is basically, uh, this is the original type that came on the car. It's an old point style distributor. It's, uh, it's pretty basic, but uh, the points can often uh, need readjustment over, over time and it's not a set and forget type thing. Um, and moving on, that's why a lot of people upgrade to this, which is out of a later 280ZX, um, I believe. It's, uh, this is an electronic, version of the distributor so instead of having points it's got an electronic ignition um, still with the distributor but uh, my particular one was not working and I could not get it to work and it was driving me crazy. The other issue with um, particularly with the manifold I've got on mine is you can't set it up for vacuum advance so most distributors have a, um, uh, a base timing you set it at and then as, uh, as you accelerate the uh, it, it sucks on this um, uh, vacuum diaphragm here and it advances the timing as you go up, so uh, in, the, in the rev range. Because of the way I've got that manifold, I can't have any vacuum advance, so I just have to set static timing uh, if I'd use this and just leave it at one thing and, uh, and hope it works. That does no longer, no longer matters because what I've done is um, I thought after this died, I thought I'd uh, contact 123 Ignition and I'd get one of these 123 Tune Plus uh, distributors. This thing sorts out all of this mess and it's basically from what I gather, um, all the information I've seen, this is like the sort of the, the distributor to get if you're going to uh, sort of, you, you want this thing to be a lot more reliable, there's uh, a lot more flexibility in it. This actually has a, um, a Bluetooth um, set up in it so I can actually you can actually adjust the uh, tune via Bluetooth um, on your phone and you can also uh, set up it as an immobilizer in it which is awesome particularly on an old car like this so I can immobilize it from my phone and it's all uh, um, it, it's, it's all sorted there this is from what I gather a much simpler setup um, I know that uh, 
Jethro Bronner with his um, uh, good YouTube channel to check out with his uh, old Alfa Romeos. He ran one for 100,000 Ks and has had uh, uh, no issues with it until he messed it up doing something. But uh, it was fixed and it's no, no problem. So basically they just, they just work and they just keep working without headaches. So I'm going to now, I need to uh, swap over the uh, base of this distributor over onto um, this one and uh, let's see if we can put it in the car. Okay, so the distributor is set up, ready to go. So the uh, first thing I need to do before I actually mount it into the car is to turn it over and get it, uh, get cylinder number one to top dead center. That means that the distributor is all turned around so that it is ready facing to uh, uh, the number one and we can start fitting the distributor to the car. Okay, so I've set the car at top dead center and uh, I've taken note of where the original distributor pointed to cylinder number one. So this is uh, cylinder number one is uh, pointing out in that direction. I know it's top dead center. I also know on the distributor cap where number one cylinder is. So now I need to um, put in my one, two, three ignition distributor in the same spot pointing towards cylinder number one in that direction. One quick thing I'll just uh, I'll just note is um, for all of you guys doing it on at this using this distributor at least on a Z, um, basically the rotor on this particular distributor runs in line with the the notch on the bottom of the distributor, whereas the factory ones run at 90 degrees. So uh, just as of an uh, as a note, your number one will be facing sort of down compared to you know, 90 degrees out from where you had it. So uh, I'm gonna sit this in the car now and start looking at wiring it up. All right, now I've got the um, distributor in there. Next step is uh, organizing the wiring. Um, it's pretty simple. There are just three wires. You don't connect them all up straight away, but um, I'll get them all ready to go. Uh, all you've got is black, red, and blue. Um, red goes to the positive side of the coil along with the uh, ignition power. Uh, black goes to the negative side of the coil and the blue goes to a, a ground on the body. So um, I'm gonna start uh, just cutting these to length, getting them all uh, nicely set up with the uh, little connectors on the end and um, get them ready to connect up and uh, start setting this thing up. So now we've got the uh, distributor in, the way to actually set it up and to get the timing static with the engine at top dead center, um, because this distributor turns in an anti-clockwise direction, I want to turn my rotor clockwise, just take any slack out of it, and then I turn the whole unit in a clockwise direction until the green light turns on. There we go. You see there the green light turned on, that means it's all done, now I can lock it down, button it up, and it's ready to go. Now that's it for uh, setting that up. Basically that is all lined up and ready to go. Um, it's all locked in, you don't have to adjust that again. That's all now done via the app and via the pre-programmed tunes. So uh, now I'm just gonna replace the cap, uh, noting that uh, this is in line with cylinder number one, re-mount uh, all of the uh, ignition leads and, um, and connect up the coil connect up the black wire to the coil, and um, hopefully we should be cooking gas.
double check that I've got the, um, the firing order correct. Um, everything's connected up. <sighs> Hopefully now, this just starts on the key. From uh, what I gather, the, um, the timing is all sorted in the uh, distributor. You don't have to play around with the timing light or anything like that. It's already programmed into the distributor as you get it. Um, but you can uh, put different tunes into it and uh, different advanced curves and all that sort of stuff's all uh, available. Well, let's just, um, that's scary, but uh, let's give it a start and <laughs> see if it goes. I'll just give it a couple of pumps and see if it starts on the key. Wait for the fuel pump to get quiet. And it starts right up. some smoke all right um time to uh do a little bit of mixture adjustment i think it's running a little bit lean um it's pre-firing so uh, a good tip um uh, that i learned from franny from hotties and franny's garage um if a car's pre-firing so it's popping out of the um out of the filter you know that it's got uh, it's running lean if it's uh backfiring and out of the exhaust you know it's running rich so um all right i've got it running But it sounds horrible, so I'm going to let it get up to temperature and then uh, I'll start playing with the mixtures and see if I can get it looking, um, running a bit better than what it does at the moment, because at the moment it's horrible. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check and see that they are um, reasonably balanced. That means that they're basically sucking the same amount of air in each. Um, I did go and buy myself uh, one of these levels. So basically you uh, sit this on the end here and the ball will float up and down. And uh, as long as you can get them all to the ball sitting about the same height in this tube, it works. The issue is, is that I went through and uh, I had to cut down the side of each of my bell mounts. So this is no longer going to sit flat. Thankfully, I managed to go and borrow one of these off of a mate. So this has actually uh, got a, a cone shape fitting on it. Same basic principle. It will just suck the uh, little needle down. And you just want them all reading about the same. But it's still coughing and spluttering and backfiring like a pig. So um, I'm going to have to uh, look into it. I, I did notice that the timing was set. Um, basically, this has a, um, a curve. If I can bring it up. The original curve... Um, actually was set at um, 500 and 1000 RPM and 1400 was set at zero. And I've changed it to 10 degrees advance because uh, I think it needs about 10 or 12 standard anyway. So I've, I've changed the, um, the, the lower advance curve on it um, and then it goes through up to 29 degrees at the top. But uh, that's something you can just adjust here and edit on the, on the phone and the distributor will do it automatically. So um, either way, I'm going to start it up now and, um, and see how balanced they are.
Well, it's running, but it's running like an absolute dog. It's coughing and spluttering. Um, I've tried changing the mixture screws and it does nothing. I can wind them all the way in and all the way out and it doesn't seem to be affecting it uh, in any way, which is uh, quite odd. Um, I double checked the timing as I showed you on the, uh, the base map, it had zero degrees. Um, I changed it to 12 degrees. Doesn't really seem to make a difference. Um, at this stage, I'm not sure what the issue would be. Um, are the idle jets the wrong size? I'm not sure. I, I don't have any jets for this, but uh, I mean, in theory, they should be good on this engine. Um, in any case, at this stage, oh, I think I'm gonna leave that part because um, I'm just chasing my tail at the moment. I've also noticed I'm leaking oil from the, uh, the uh, connections on my oil press tender, so there's a, there's a little leak I've got to tidy up and a couple of bits and pieces. So I think I'm gonna leave this for now and stop bashing my head against the wall and uh, go and have a little bit more of a look at this wiring, which is still really troubling me. But we're getting there. So to give you a bit of an idea of what I've been working with over the last little bit is I've been using the wiring diagram like this, but it's not super clear as to what things do. So uh, this type of wiring diagram shows, this is the uh, combination switches, which is actually the, uh, the switches I'm dealing with here. That's, that's this part here. Um, and it just shows you all the colors of the wires coming in, but it doesn't really show you what happens. What you need is the more detailed, crazy, super hard to follow wiring diagram if this thing will focus. So what we've got is this super difficult to follow wiring diagram. It's uh, black and white. It's just got little letters next to the numbers. Uh, I can't even get the camera down to, uh, to focus down that small and it's tiny. But what I did is um, this actually shows you uh, what the switches do. So I blew that up into a diagram like this. This is much easier to read. This actually tells you these uh, letters here are actually the Y color, so that's uh, green, blue, G and L for blue, because um, B is black, uh, and G, W, so it's green with a white stripe, and that is green with a blue stripe. And it just tells you, okay, if, with the light switch, this one, when you switch it to position one, it joins those two wires together. And this shows you what everything actually does. So when you come back up here, you can actually go and have a look and find the wires that it's talking about. It's hard to see in the camera. This is green, blue. This one is green, white. So when you turn this, when you turn this switch onto position one, it joins those two wires together. So it's just a matter of going through this wire, wiring diagram and searching through, finding out what this does. And then this is a 260Z. So you can see I've drawn the 260Z colors on this side and that's the 240Z uh, original uh, colors there. I actually have a 260Z switch, but using these things, it's a matter of just going through and linking everything up. As long as you know that basically every single circuit, all of these wires, all basically do the same thing, whereas they get negative from one side and positive on the other side. And basically, once you create a circuit, then the light will turn on or the starter motor will go or whatever. But that's basically what you're looking at. And it's just really tedious trying to work out what wires are where, where they come from, where they go. Uh, but once you can start deciphering some of this, um, gobbledygook, you can actually start making some progress. And I now have switched headlights. So when this is switched all the way on, it switches the red and the red white wires together. Now, normally red and red white would be positive, but uh, in this case, because the uh, light is now switched negative, it's switched through, I've connected it up, the red wire here, through to the negative side of my um, high low beam switch this is what this one does and this sends the power out to the lights so now it is actually connected up and uh, I actually have working headlights if you can see out the uh, front of the car here the mirror I have set up and we have high beam low beam yes that's a win Okay, I'm going to move on and do something a little less frustrating than wiring or dealing with an engine that I can't uh, get to run properly. And I thought I'd finish off these door trims. Now, I started them the other week and uh, I 
I didn't get them all buttoned up anyway, but I'd also forgotten to put the, uh, the plastic lining in there. Um, you really need it in there. It's a moisture barrier. It stops um, the uh, door trims getting wrecked and uh, I'm going to stick it on. I've just got some plastic I've had lying around the uh, garage. I don't know what it's from, but uh, this is a nice thick stuff that uh, I'll cut out to the shape that I want. I have some non-curing mastic. Um, this stuff is the perfect stuff. You don't want Sikaflex or something where you can never get it off. This stuff will stay rubbery, rubbery and gummy uh, the whole time. So I'll run the, a bead of that around the edge, stick the plastic on, and, um, and then I'll reassemble these door trims, hopefully for the last time. That was still a lot more work than I expected, but I've got it uh, mostly on. I just need to get another longer screw for this uh, side of the armrest. But I'm definitely out of time. That is uh, all the time I have for today. So um, I think that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, for the 1976 IMSA Race Series, Jim Busby turned up in a brand new Porsche Carrera RSR. I need to realize he was being left way behind his competitors after the first race. Most of his competition were basically NASCAR's tube framed Chevys with fiberglass shells compared to his which was a Porsche being basically a modified road car. Besides having a lot less power than the Chevys, Jim had real issues with getting the 911 to turn in. For the weight behind the rear axle, the car would push and then when it finally did come around, the car would pendulum. Jim thoroughly read the rule book. And it stated that you could not change the wheelbase. It didn't, however, state exactly where the wheelbase needed to be. They then modified the whole car to move the wheelbase rearward, and they also pushed the driver's seat forward in a bid to get more weight in the front of the car. They then modified the whole car to move the wheelbase backward, and they moved the driver's seat forward, all in a bid to get more weight over the front wheels. From then on, Jim Busby and his RSR was on the podium for the rest of the season. All right, that is really good. I've finally got the, uh, the 123 ignition distributor in, which is great. Yeah. Um, the car is coughing and spluttering. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I'm wondering, uh, because it's uh, pre-firing, I'm thinking it's lean. I think the, uh, the idle jets might be uh, too small. I've got a friend, Graham, coming over on, uh, on Saturday to... Uh, have a look at this, so um, we'll uh, we'll have a bit more of Tinker. Any suggestions? I'm uh, happy if some of you can go, I know what that's doing. I'm sure there'll be uh, a lot Rightfully of comments. Gratefully received. Yes, so <laughs> uh, anyway, um, it's it's coming together. It's getting closer. Um, Inching there. We're getting yes. there. Okay. Hope you're enjoying the show. Yep. And if you are, please like and subscribe. Go and see us on Patreon. Uh, there's links in the description, and it really helps us out. And um, you also get to watch the videos a day before everybody else. For the 1976 IMSA Race Rally. So tube. 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 Chevys with fiberglass shells. Blah, blah, blah. It would end up pendulums, verming.